And we're back after game one of our super heavyweight SmackDown and Cloud9 Challengers drawing first blood in the best of two beatdown. They looked pretty good doing it. I know Eminus was struggling a little bit, but they showed that they are resilient enough that even if he doesn't have a monstrous lead, they can get the win. I think that was one of the biggest questions we had yesterday, and we thought the answer to that was no when Cloud9, or Cloud9, excuse me, wildcard 2-0 them. But this is a good look, clearly a wake-up call for this Cloud9 roster, and this is the Cloud9 we expect to be one of the top teams in this tournament, because that was squeaky clean. The Cloud9, we were promised. Deserex, 100 Thieves Challengers, meanwhile, struggling slightly in that game top half looked all right but honestly it felt like the bottom half was the one that was uh kind of struggling to get online they struggled to get online but they didn't flounder um yukino also struggled to get the rest of the game going and unfortunately cloud nine were the wiser to a lot of his uh, shenanigans for the early game so stopping that early game of yukino did stop a lot of the game plan for 100 mm -hmm. thieves it felt like well i gotta say because the two of you have been roasting me all day. You've been smack-talking me all day. But since this is the Super Heavyweight Smackdown, I think it's time that you start smack-talking each other. Because let me tell y'all, a real <laughs> Super Heavyweight Tag Team Champion doesn't hesitate. A real Super Heavyweight Smack Team Champion doesn't misplay the map. A real Super Heavyweight Smackdown Tag Team Champion Grass winning lanes, not this late game snooze fest. A real late game. Super Heavyweight SmackDown champion wins the game. Representing in the blue corner. He'll let you know how it is. He'll tell you the crux. His name is Deserux. And in the red corner, coming in hot. But he's the coolest guy in town. We got beat down. We got a smack talk segment here for the super heavyweight smack down. Gentlemen, you've been given your teams. Let's bring up the contestants. Desrex, you got 30 seconds on the clock to tell me how it is. How are 100 Thieves Challengers feeling? 100 Thieves Challengers, they ain't feeling too bad. You know what? You gotta fall sometimes to see where the problems are, and when they spot them, they'll rise to the top because that is what they do. Oh. Cypher, Yukino, 16 year old, sure, they're fresh to the scene. That means they gotta learn a few lessons, but what they get those lessons settled, it's time to retire every single member of Cloud9 Challengers ah. roster. Nicely done, Deserux. I'm giving that one the old nine out of 10, baby. You can kind of see it. I got to draw these ones myself. Our budget's a little lower. Beat down. Tell me uh, about Cloud9. The gameplay speaks for itself, Kangas. You talked about how laning is more important and Cloud9 got laning in spades. Fake God is undeniable. Tomio is unbeatable. Lost and Zazel unstoppable. And MNS in the mid lane is incomprehensible. You think oh. you can come back after last game? You have a better chance beating Wildcard. Oh, well that's actually pretty hard to beat Wildcard. That's really tough. I'm giving that one a 10 out of 10. That's Rix. You got one rebuttal. 20 seconds on the clock. All right, don't you worry. Just because you take one win doesn't mean you're taking the whole thing. Just as Pretty Pretty knows about that. Had a rough time with his old org. Now shine and bright with the new one. And you brought him more goons. We got Unforgiven. We got Destiny. We got Firepower in the uh... bottom lane. Desrex bringing in the heat beat down. Final thoughts for the matchup before picking bad. Nothing's gonna change, Desrex. Nothing you say is gonna change reality. And reality is Cloud9 are gonna be the tops of this league. Cloud9 are gonna take everyone's names on their way to the top. And there's nothing Sniper Yukino or any of those chumps on 100 Thieves can do about it. Not too bad, Beatdown, but everybody in Twitch chat, let me know who you think won the Smack Talk battle. Spam C9C. If you think it's Cloud9 Challenger, spam 100C. If you think it's the 100 Thieves. Not too bad, gentlemen. Not too bad. Respectful. Better than Respectful. my last time. Uh, I, 
went against all the production time. crew and Kangas and all them, and it was just a one-sided. <sighs> uh, you, you got you got you got chops beat. I got shivers, and I also blacked like out for got... three minutes. What happened there? What was going er on? Eric got chopped up. That's what happened. Eric got chopped up. Eric, man, what's you doing? I thought you were good at Smack Talk. You know what? You know what? We finally have a challenger beat down. I'm going to let you have this dub this time, but don't Lashy you says. worry. Don't you worry. Next time you turn around, I'm going to have that steel chair and lay it right into your back, baby. I think the problem is he had the team that won the last game. It's going to be up That's to 100 very challengers yeah. to see how <laughs> they can turn it around because top half sniper props to him. He tried his absolute best, but it felt like the walls were closing in. The wheels were falling off the cart on other areas of the map. I think pretty needs to step it up a little bit more going into this next game. But we are getting ready for pick and ban. So like I said, let us know who you're rooting for in the Twitch chat for the Super Heavyweight Smackdown for 100 Thieves Challengers versus Cloud9 Challengers. Pick and ban is ready. So gentlemen, take it away. Get out of here, bald man. We got a final game to... Uh, yeah, I derailed myself on it, beat down. <laughs> <laughs> you have no one to blame but yourself, Eric. <laughs> That, that, that's my bad right there, but you know what? Good trash talk beat down. Good trash talk. I actually you have to uh, well. get prepared now for uh, some real competition. Speaking of competition, we got our second match right now. Our final match of the day, mind you. 100 right. Thieves Challengers versus C9 Challengers. Now, what do you think the adaptation is going to be for 100 Thieves? Uh, early plans kind of fell through with Yukino getting first blooded. I think so. Um, draft wise, I'm not sure if we're going to see any switch-ups, really. I mean, the Maokai is getting taken away, as so often does for the most part. This time, Hunter Thieves want to be pinching the pool. Oh, my God. For Tomio, a lot. They're just going to go ahead and ban three junglers. We've been hyping up Mir's, our Tomio a lot. We're making sure that he doesn't get he doesn't get anything. He doesn't get to have fun. At this point, it's just going to be like a Vi Wukong for both of these junglers. <laughs> We'll see if that's going to be the case. I mean, with how many junglers we've had ban out, yeah, 100 Thieves. Yeah. As you said, they don't want Tomi to have fun. Uh, Marksman bans coming in for C9 Challenger is going to target that pull of Unforgiven. But as you said, Beat, wow, you predicted the future. It's Vi. Oh, how does he do it? Telecasters have it pretty good in this patch, man. <laughs> <laughs> they do. And we're seeing that. Lock in for Yukino. I mean, the playmaking, you know how it goes. And with all that's left, it makes the most sense. C9, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Lost and Zazel, bang up performance in game one. So they're running back Lucian Nami. They were beastly in that bottom lane. Unforgiven and Destiny were kind of stonewalled for quite some time yeah. into that bottom lane. Now, I want to stress this. Unforgiven and Destiny did not do poorly. They just couldn't do that's basically what happened. It was just Lost and Zazel would not that's allow their lane to do. Yeah, I mean, I mean, a lot of good play coming through from Cloud9. I think they really ran away with that matchup, mm. and the dragon stacking is what allowed them to really continue on this pressure for the most part. That and all the attention from mid lane and MNS with the Corky, which was super interesting as well. So I'm wondering, we saw the takeaway of the Maokai from Tomio. Maybe in the second rotation, now that the Wukong is locked in, I wonder if these will also consider taking away something like the Corky, because the team fight potential with that package, even if it's not at Dragon Fights, it's pretty good. That was very interesting from MNS. It was a very unorthodox Corky. Because I was looking at the Dragon timer and everything, and it just kind of auto-synced into my head until I realized, wait, wait, wait. This was way earlier than what it was supposed to yep. be. Eminem, I mean, got the mind games going there, but a lot of purpose when he did use those packages. So something for a hunter thieves to keep in mind. We're seeing different bands coming through here. I don't believe that Talia was out of the picture in the second rotation last time, taking away things from Pretty. So we could actually see an Ari band also. It's probably taking away some pretty good pairings with the Vi. I think that's what they're trying to target specifically kind of remove some wombo from yukino's combo on the side of 100 thieves span comes in solo lanes being targeted out fiora final ban of four c9 challengers see where they want to place that counter pick into um, one more for 100 thieves i do like the fact that yukino is on the vi this time i think yukino uh, does a little bit better when your champion can be aggressive and and has a bit of that damage to uh, boot follow through. Final band comes in. It will be the Jax. Makes sense. Good team fighter. Everything along those lines. And now, if you're Cloud9, 
kind of have a couple options here. We, you could pick the RE yourself because it's something almost certainly that's being looked for on the side of 100 Thieves, or you just secure Fake Out a strong top matchup. Once again, it's not even the Cassante, which was up and available. They're giving him the Renekton again, and he looked great last game. You might as well try it again. So Fake Odd will be on that Renekton, but will Sniper change up his tune? That's going to be the question right now that we'll have answered. Uh, still waiting for those solo lanes. Again, um, Sniper did talk a lot about wanting to be a weak side king, so to say, uh, last year and looking for the next area to improve. And uh, my play to that right now because going to take that Orn locked in for the top side. Right. It's good because when you have this Lulu, and I mean, when you, we've pulled away from the engage support kind of meta coming through here, tanks became, I think, a little better in some ways where you have that kind of engage coming through here, especially Orn, some of the best we got because of the long range engage, the way you can disengage, and the scaling you offer with those Orn items here. And oh, so it's the Cassiopeia. Okay. That's actually, okay, I like this because you got three dashes so far. Oh yeah, On Cloud9 Challenger side. Yeah, exactly. So you got a lot of zone control with that Miasma, and of course, the Orn just adds so much more. And Vanessa, is it gonna be LeBlanc? Oh, this is confidence. Wow. Wow. All right, so we got the LeBlanc lock in. in coming out for MNS. Um, not phased at all by the Miasma of the Cassiopeia. You were saying three dashes. Well, now it's four, four and by yeah. choice. Right, so they locked it in. MNS knows what he's getting into with this matchup, and I'm excited to see how this one works out. We saw Doxa play the uh, LeBlanc earlier on today with some success as well. Or TSM oh. is a champ where you can don't have to play front to back. You can cheat a little bit and get on top of people like Unforgiven, like Destiny, and honestly, even Yukino, because Vi isn't like really that tanky. And that's what I'm looking for here from MNS, trying to be that alternate route of attack here. You have Lost and Zazel, who are probably going to continue to perform like we saw, but now you have this other way of playing the game where you have to worry about the front, and then kind of like you were saying, behind with the steel chair. That's what MNS is doing this game. Well, he's going to have to uh, challenge that against the tables and ladders of Yukino. I want to see the early game of Yukino here. Normally does these very early aggressive plays. Yukino likes to take creative pathing. Um, as I was saying during the champion select, I think this is a better take for Yukino. It's a better champion for Yukino to make those early plays a reality for 100 Thieves. Right. Vault Breaker. Big engage tool in these early minutes, and of course, level six, a cease and desist. Really great way to lock people down. And although it's not an Ari, or Talia, or something along those lines, Pretty has the Miasma, which can function very similarly, just to be able to prevent people from escaping this all in that you're going for here. But the early minutes, Minions I'm interested, small. because MNS, although this is probably not, actually, I need to hold that thought. Wait, what's going on right here? Oh, that's a lot of damage. Oh, it's a lot of damage onto Zazel, but it's getting returned right now on Unforgiven who has to burn his flash and is going to get first blooded in the process. Wow. You thought it was bad before when Lost was styling on you? Well, let's look at what happens when he has a kill. That's a great read. Like, Zazel and Lost want to go down and clear this brush, and they say, hey, Eminem, come with... Uh, MNS, excuse me. Come with us. And even though... MNS is going to lose some health in the process. I mean, he trades back just fine onto Pretty, and this is an unreal advantage. Lost, although doesn't he doesn't have time to back yet, he will be able to back sooner to get that Serrated Dirk, which is a big spike for Lucianami in this lane. Unforgiven Destiny, going to have a very, very bad time in this bottom side. Unfortunate, but that's the way it be. Smart plays coming out of Cloud9 to... Mm read that movement coming out from 100 thieves now here's the part where i get curious uh are they looking for lost and zazel to be the aggressors right here because yukino can path down to this bottom side uh flash was burnt oh, from lost as well two. i think the angle is making a play on to pretty just wait and see very carefully maybe i'll take this minute to let you know oh never mind oh mns with the flash able to get the tether Ooh! What the hell? That was filthy, B. Two flashes for one, but you secure the kill. I call that worth. 
really aggressive here from Cloud9. They're getting everything they want. This is a repeat of game one, but they're speed running it. They know our day's been going long, Eric, and they're trying to close this out nice and quick before Yukino has been able to do anything that's two separate uh, plays go in favor of Cloud9. Into the carries. Oh, they're the, the ones carries. cashing in. Great stuff for Cloud9. I mean, they're reading things so well onto the map at the moment. MNS just reading exactly where that flash was going to be. Catches out the Cassiopeia. The gank bot side. And we're only in the first three minutes beat. Right, and there's more to happen here. Zazel finds this roam before even hitting level three because they want to pressure this mid lane. They know how much of a problem Pretty is going to be in those later stages, so they're committing a lot. Pretty, you can see, playing to the top side here, playing to the vision that he has in his jungler in the top side river. But MNS says, yeah, I don't really care about all that. I'm going to attack you. MNS has a lot of patience with these skills. Let's pretty dodge out onto nothing before finally burning it out. You know, didn't get the cheather pop, but um, let's play to the hands of MNS. Now the play into the bottom lane. Lost looking to exchange a bit more. No flashes. Ooh, going forward no on Forgiven. Doesn't realize Tomio is waiting in that brush. Now walking towards that direction. Might have been telegraphed. Lost and Zazel did posture forward for a second. Yeah, that's right. Walking past the wave kind of gave away a little information, but the angle is still here. Remember, they don't have flashes. That's why Yukino is in the area as well. Knows that he needs to cover for his bot lane. And oh. from that toggle, yeah, to Tomio's gone. This ward should reveal Yukino if he walks into the other bush. Yukino. I don't want to get bamboozled again. Observer, do the fog I war. Know. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, see, it's okay. <laughs> it, 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 was just, it was just there for the homies, but oh man, as soon as he walks away, look what happens. Six cents. Lost nose. I smell a jungler afoot. Oh, don't smell it anymore. Jump on Unforgiven. <laughs> That's right. The air is clear, which means I will clear you of your health bar, Unforgiven. He's been doing just that. I mean, we look across the board here, take a moment as things kind of slow back down. Cloud9, really strong start. Oh, Polymorph does a bit of work. Lost, still be able to pace oh backwards and gets oh. Destiny. Wow, oh. wow. Yeah, Lost is off to the races now. Two kills, five minutes. Yeah, problem is Yukino's in the area. Oh, okay. here we go. Zazel's going to look to body block. Flash is coming up really soon for Lost and beautiful by Zazel. Yukino couldn't get the angle for the Flash Vault Breaker and now this is getting flipped. Lost flash flash. looking for the kill. Has Flash available. Just came off cooldown. Will not use it instead. Going to save it for safety. It just doesn't get better than this and oh my god, Fake God has something to say as well. Oh, Young yeah. kid in the top side, get off my lawn. Thank God we'll send him to the respawn. Recall now coming out for Sniper as maybe a few more plates in the future of Fake God. I see a dragon in the future of Cloud9 as well. MNS already with the early sweeper doing a good job of getting rid of this defensive vision that Hunter Thieves are trying to set up. It's going to give Tomio those opportunities to invade, take these more aggressive routes inside of Yukino's jungle. And so far, you can see things are going well for him. He's up in XP. There's a lot of opportunities to look for these plays. Play for this bot lane that is 2-0 right now. Lost on this Lucian. And you have all the pressure you need to start up Dragon number one. Tomio wailing away at that Dragon. And 100 Thieves. For the time being, it's just going to be a reset. As they try and get their next plan going, you know, you're still waiting for Yukino to find the gank that's going to start yeah. to turn things around. I, I don't know if you still find it in the bottom lane anymore. Loss is getting no. too far ahead. Uh, I don't think so. Unless there is a specific cover you're trying to go for here, maybe to ensure a wave gets through or something those on those yeah. along those lines, excuse me. You're not looking to die. Uh, the bot lane. But Yukino, on the other hand. Oh, hey. Okay, we'll miss the tether. So there's some okay. uh, leeway for Yukino. Ball breaker coming through. We'll land it onto MNS, but... Oh, right there. Eminus not worried whatsoever. Won't burn flash. Won't even burn the distortion cooldown. Yeah, I mean, you're not you're not actually worried. That that felt like a, a sending a message type play here. And I think the message now for 100 Thieves is that Yukino has to keep farming. Has to get level 6. Because that's when they could probably start to turn things around. That cease and desist. A big cooldown. A big tool to be able to secure plays, dive, something along those lines. Especially with Harold coming up in about 20 seconds time. You have that opportunity to play for it. Lost and Zazel didn't rotate for it. 
in game one. And it's looking like they want to keep up this dominance in game two. So you have that opportunity with Orn, with Cassiopeia level six. You have solid team fight, and this could be 100 Thieves' angle. Cloud9 looking top side. The Thieves are going to look in the bottom lane. And with that, that means uh, priority over this Rift Herald for Cloud9. Tomio starting over there uh, will be able to grab that Scuttle Crab. General Sniper not having the best of lanes against Fake God currently. Still going to look to spot out Cloud9 attempting this Rift Herald. MNS pulled over after he did get uh, some shove into the mid lane. They're calling Yukino over, but it's going to be far too late. This Rift Herald belongs to Cloud9. I think the information is just going to give Yukino maybe that confidence to invade or help set up a, a crash on the bottom side of the map. But it's not enough because look at what Cloud9 are doing. Uh, MNS. Oh, that was so quick. In and out. Another kill for Cloud9. And a Rift Herald to boot, which means you don't even have to drop Herald topside. Fake God just continues to collect plays, continues to cash in. And all Yukino and 100 Thieves are really getting are some bot side camps. You steal blue buff for pretty, I have to assume, which is something to be happy about. But like above all, Cloud9 are coming out on top here. And it gets worse because you have this winning bot lane that is smashing right now. And now you have a Rift Herald you can give them. MNS on this LeBlanc is quite a bit of a beast. I remember uh, very first week of play, uh, MNS did pull out this LeBlanc, and it was very beastly to that regard. Poor Blaze had to have his debut against MNS's LeBlanc, and it was a 10 1 and uh, 0 performance from MNS in that week number one. That's right, that week number one where he's uh, been here from the start. You remember that, Eric? <laughs> Just want to remind you of that time I was uh, right, you recall? I'm I old, man. Ah, true, old man memory. Ah, I shouldn't. Ah, what am I busting your balls for? You gotta, like, get ready for bingo on the weekends and things like that. Oh, I'm so sorry, Eric. I, I don't, uh, yeah, don't forget. I, I gotta get that Sunday brunch with all the other senior citizens in Eastport. Early bird special, of course. <laughs> Hotshot GG's over there with me, so is Dyrus. <laughs> Ooh, Yukino setting up in the mid lane. Oh, fast! Waiting to read that distortion. Will pop on MNS, but is it going to be enough to take down MNS, who still has their flash uh -oh. available? Tomio Cyclone over the wall gets the knockup, and MNS will get the kill. The snake getting chased down by MNS as well as oh, Tomio, really? but Petrifying Gaze comes in at the perfect moment. I hope we get a replay of that one, just because I'm curious about how MNS played it. But overall, one for one, it's the best trade 100 Thieves have been able to make so far this game. But they need more than that, Eric. Yes, your Cassiopeia is starting to scale. Yeah, that's a pretty important win con to play for. But if we could just check a gold toggle really quick. I, I mean, lost MS very much ahead of their lane opponents at the moment, you gotta imagine. And that's going to be a problem because, again, we saw what happened last game when Cloud9 managed to pull away. At oh, 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 time. <laughs> that's just downright disrespectful. Oh, you're in the splash zone, Unforgiven, and Zazel will get a 1v2 kill. Call down, Tomio. Let's take some plates. Ye man, voice comms got to be laughing after that one. That's got to be a good feeling there. And it just means now, just like we talked about, Harold coming through. Surely a first brick for this bot lane. And my god. Cloud9 again, speed running what they were able to accomplish in this first game and immediately walking away to spend the goal. I can't wait to see what Lost's purchase is going to be. Boots and a Gale oh. Force. Remember that, everybody. <laughs> I'm sorry. For a moment, I thought Destiny was about to do it right back. And what was it? Well, good question. Let's watch oh, right now. Oh, let's go. Shout out, Victor, for all these fancy replays here at League Director. That is V-Flight. And we're going to see this wonderful angle. And where he knew, Hazel knows what he's about, everybody. He knew he had this kill. Oh, Zazel, that was a great kill. And uh, more gold for this bottom lane of Cloud9 Challengers, which is so far accelerated. This is the, uh, this is a speed run for sure. This is the zoom zoom of doom coming out from Cloud9. Oh, I like that. And something, I'll call it a bright spot under Thieves. Actually managed to sneak the dragon, so soul isn't really on the table for anybody anytime soon. They buy themselves time. And I think time is something that will actually benefit 100 Thieves a lot. I gotta hold that thought. Are you kidding me, MNS? Still going for these dives. 
Oh, fortunately for Pretty, you did have Destiny there, but behind the tower, Tomio will bring some monkey business to the lane of Pretty. So, I said time will really benefit 100 Thieves. But the amount of time they need will be very contingent upon how many successful plays <laughs> Cloud9 are going to be able to get. Because what I'm hoping they can play for... Oh, let's take a look at the gold here for a second. My god. This is kind of ridiculous, Eric. 1,000 gold at the very least. Actually, like 1,500 at the very least. And as high as yeah. 2,000 for Fake God on the top side. Only going to grow with this turret he gets for himself. And this is what I mean, 100 Thieves. You have Cassiopeia, you have Orn, you got Zeri, Lulu, like, you scale. But you need to get to these crucial item spikes, and uh, you need to get there soon. That's the difficult part. They're getting smashed in every lane, Beat. <laughs> Where do they get there from is the better question. Like, what can you really play around at this point? I, I guess some level of team fight. You saw what Pretty can do with that Petrifying Gaze. Paired up with Sniper a pick like that but i feel like with the mobility that you have on both lost and mns they will not give you the time of day no i mean for what it's worth lost is not running the cleanse this time so a polymorph petrifying gaze something along those lines actually won't he has no escape from that if it hits him so that's something you can be depending on but also there's a lot of pressure on you to mark mns because we're seeing what he's doing this is how you play leblanc you just Come over walls, clear vision, do stuff like this. You have to be so wary of this champion. You have to be as annoying as humanly possible. As yeah. MNS popping in with that chip damage, that distortion did a lot to Unforgiven. Yeah. I mean, that's, that, that's, that's just, just a the hey. That, that's just the hey, how are you? How, yeah. uh, don't, he hasn't even asked you how you're doing yet. MNS is a problem. Oh, there it is. Nice. That's how you doing? Uh, uh, here it comes. How are you doing? Already one kill. Yukino goes down. Cyclone oh onto God. the back end. Tomio has no problem putting down Pretty. Two falling. Yukino, Pretty not going to be on the map. Seeing gray screens is uh, Cloud9. Going to be seeing a lot of gold. Sieging up in the mid. Tomio not afraid of snakes. And Cloud9 not afraid to put the screws to 100 Thieves. They will collect their prize, which is just more gold, more camps, and just more resource denial from 100 Thieves. Cloud9 continuing to dominate in this game. And this is, again, a team where we had high expectations. We kind of revisited and potentially started reevaluating those expectations yesterday after a great victory from Wildcard. But this is like, er uh, no, not you, actually. Kenga said it was the Cloud9 that was promised. Take another look at this mid lane right now and just how fast this damage does come through. I mean, you can't stay underneath your tower. It feels nope. like at this point, nowhere is safe. No, and I mean, just props to Tomio playing this one really well. Slides right behind Pretty, so the Petrifying Gaze can't even hit him, and Pretty just never had a chance. Continuing to flex that gold lead. And, man, Cloud9, they, they said Max. it. Pure dominance. And by the way, just letting you know, if you want to be part of the conversation, if you want your tweets to make it on stream, either today or tomorrow. Oh, thank you, production. Use the hashtag NACL on Twitter. Let us rate your tweets. Right on cue. It's like they're listening. It's crazy. That's wild. It's it, it's still a lot of young developing talent that is going to learn in the long term for Hunter Thieves Challengers. But absolutely, y you can't take it away from the fact that Cloud9 have developed a lot of good talent to their own right, right? Uh, Fudge, Zazel, uh, Blabber are a few names that come to mind. They're kind of the OGs in development place. Yeah. Might not be taking the talent as young, but still taking them places. I mean, everyone and their mom has played support for Cloud9 at a certain point. <laughs> That's true. And, I mean, another thing, too, Cloud9, we, we hyped up Shaden in this split. I mean, Cloud9 is the one who got him last year before All they right. traded for Tomio. Oh, <gasps> my jeez. No words. Sniper got sniped. <laughs> Some okay, words. maybe some words. Tomio <laughs> Cyclone on to Unforgiven. Double Cyclone. Get the knockup. Tomio still going to pop the hey. ultimate, but it's not enough to pop Unforgiven. Turn around potentially for the Thieves. MS working his way up over to the mid lane. But the Thieves don't want to fight. They're happy taking one pick on Tomio and calling it even. MS, low health, can be very misleading. A lot of burst damage. Pretty. 
he's trying to read the petrifying gaze, but it is on cooldown right now. Yeah, I, I think it happened earlier. That's why his health dropped really low. But I mean, MNS this game has been electric. There was a play earlier we didn't get to replay, which I thought was crazy, where he had a feeling. He must have had a feeling or was trying to braid out a cooldown or something. Immediately, Distortions comes right back, and that baited Yukino basically under his turret. And uh, he's a player we highlight for a reason, Eric. He's 4-0-3 oh, on this LeBlanc. He's got eight stacks in the BM book. As Cloud9 looks to pick up Dragon number two for that. What a terrifying player. Magi's done working towards his third item at the moment and has just been skyrocketing in both economy, kills, you name it. Let's look at the play that happened over here in the bottom lane. I think this is the one we missed earlier. Yep. Ah, oh, the bush ah. play. Yeah. Yeah, it checks out. You just strolled nice out. there from pretty. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's that simple. You don't get hit by the gaze. You're a mobile champ like LeBlanc. You're fine. Gamer casting to... Oh, damn. Thanks, hey. Derek. Shout out to you. Um, I gotta love the love for not only the teams, but the talent. Shout out over there coming through. MNS. Oh, Ooh. on to you, Kino. MNS could take this if he really wants to. Not gonna mess with Yukino too much right there. We'll save the rest of the convo for maybe another one of the thieves. Pretty taking a <laughs> little chip on the chin. I will say, oh my gosh, okay. Uh, Cloud9 are 11k up, which is absurd. I hadn't looked up in a, ri a while, and uh, it's a lot. But we're looking. Let's let's do uh Why don't you join me, Desirex? I was telling Rafa about this yesterday. Why don't you join me in the Copium Corner? Copium Corner? <laughs> yeah! So... Mike, the Copium Corner is a place where we think about ways teams who are kind of struggling get themselves back into this game. And at perfect timing, 100 Thieves. You're you're at the two item mark as pretty on this Cassiopeia. So you're at a point where you actually could do quite a lot of damage. Unforgiven, getting closer and closer to that two item mark where Zeri really starts to light it up. It's going to be their moment to make something happen. As long as Cloud9 doesn't do exactly what I think they're doing, which is set up for that Baron, in which case that makes things very difficult. Oh, <laughs> I think that saved his life, no cap. I think you're right. And Eminence is still hopping in. Cyclone goes off. Eminence caught by the cease and desist. Might go down right now. They'll chase him over. Realizing oh, they no. win after the clone. Eminence, you did him dirty. Puts down the tether. Destiny will flash away. Well, you get MS's flash. It costs you a lot of cooldowns, but that's something to be able to walk away with Sniper. I mean, he's fine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the clone the clone was an unlucky one. Had that pick gone through, maybe something else happened. But this is how 100 Thieves find their way back into this one, Eric. It's plays like that. You catch someone overextended. You get an angle, and you take someone out of the picture. But right now, Baron is in the picture for Cloud9. They're just going to go ahead and start her up. Yeah gonna be good night quite soon for 100 thieves 3k health remains no one to contest right here no one to do anything to what cloud nine have brought on the map baron going their way and they'll transfer that over to the top side as they'll begin a siege and the first steps to closing out what could be a 2-0 game against the thieves i mean cloud nine looking very dominant mns feeling himself doesn't even begin to describe it. First the Corky game now. No. Oh, you! Oh my word! He just destroyed you, Kino. Oh, they're Lost. just sending it. Beautiful with that calling right now. Pretty <laughs> caught out. Lost will follow through a double kill for Tomio. Two down for the thieves. It's time to full send it for Cloud Nine. Right, they're using. They're making full use of this Baron buff. Unforgiven. Oh, unforgiven. Can we talk. Okay, he's good. He's Zeri. I forgot. Just doing Zeri things, but. Thing is, uh, Zeri's not that good at frontlining when you got two very, very <laughs> angry that. animals staring right at your face and taking your inhibitors. Inhibitor number one yeah. gonna go down in the mid lane. Tower over on that top side. You gotta be careful. Fake God could flash stun you immediately, but he's not gonna go for it. They came right after the Baron to knock down these structures, so some great purchases about to come through. And I like this, Yukino. Trying to mess with some back timers. Maybe they catch somebody out of how quickly you can end up going back to base but it doesn't pan out so you get some breathing room and i really really stress the word some here for the side of 100 thieves because they oh my god they got their work cut out for them this next dragon because of the first one they got isn't soul so the bright side is 
you can let that one go. And I think the focus here for them is you have a lot of turrets to take off the map. Get those objective bounties. Focus yourself on the top side of the map. Cover pretty. Help them get those structures down and just give up the drag. So this is the copium corner I see. I mean, what I'm saying is right. You're right. You're right. No, 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 no. I'm not, I'm not saying you're wrong. I'm just saying we're coping. Hmm. I mean, they, 100 Thieves is coping if they, if they can fight this dragon, which I, I don't think they will. Uh, even with that and standing gold, I don't think MS is going to let you anywhere near it. Belongs to him. probably true. Bank belongs to him. Same thing with loss. Both of these two together, I uh, wouldn't really think. Oh, my Their carries, God. trying to play as frontliners. Oh, call the Forge. Zazel! What the heck, man? Blocks out the call of the Forge God with a tidal wave. Tomio hopping in. Cyclone will spin to win on to Pretty and take him down. Lost grabs that kill, gets a double to top it off. And three defenders left for the Thieves while Cloud9 put your base in flames. They'll go for more. Unstoppable is MS's LeBlanc. A shutdown finally going to be returned. Unforgiven. Uh, oh, this has been an unforgivable play coming out for oh, Cloud9. They'll the tear him apart. One more Nexus Tower in Cloud9 and the Super Heavyweight Smackdown will beat the living daylights out of 100 Thieves Challengers. And such a dominating showing. Eric puts Cloud9 Challengers at 9-3, and three, being our third team uh, from the last time I checked to be able to tie for that first place there along with Fear. And the series we did before. Gonna hold ahead and look at my nose. Team Liquid Challengers. <sighs> Oh man, Cloud9 came to play today. Uh, for this matchup, I mean, 100 Thieves is a team that I definitely have within my top three. Cloud9, I'm not gonna lie, I've been a little bit on the sleepy side of, but <sighs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I, I was wrong, m and is the real deal. And wait, wait, sorry, sorry, say that again. I was wrong. Oh yeah, that's the good stuff. Right there. I know, I know <laughs> Kangas is enjoying himself in the background as well hearing that. Uh, careful with your choice of words there, Beat. MS, pretty good, isn't he? Main team win. <laughs> yeah. Real. That's going to be the pressure for the Cloud9 mid over in LCS uh, Diplex. We'll have to uh, deal with the breath of MS being on the back of his neck, knowing he's putting on performance like this in the NACL, Beat. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, MS ha I mean, had some downs yesterday, but I think for the most part, has been a pretty positive, consistent player for this Cloud9 roster. And Cloud9 overall. Again, once again, reminding us how good they can be and is only week three. Who knows how they'll be able to continue stepping it up and who knows how they'll be able to stack up because, of course, this is a developmental league and all the other teams will be developing alongside them. So maybe they won't stay at the top forever. This is even their final form. Wait until next week. We'll get even, uh, we'll, we'll get Frieza Arc. Go even MS further coming beyond. <laughs> well, for the desk, we're going to throw it over to Kangas because he will have an interview lined up with one of the winners of Cloud9 Challengers, but right after this break. Hello and welcome back, everybody, for our post series interview a 2 0 victory for Cloud9 Challengers. And we have lost to chat with us about that. Lost. We had built this up to be the super heavyweight smackdown of the weekend, and I'm not sure if it lived up to that after that performance. Y'all schlacks, though. What do you feel? Um, we do a little bit of trolling yesterday, so we do a little less trolling today, and I think uh, <laughs> I think we're a really strong team, and we failed to show that yesterday, so we brought it back today, so I'm happy about it. Well, y y you mentioned yesterday, so let's actually start there. W what do you feel is uh, the reason for maybe this kind of inconsistent weekend so far? Because we had very high expectations coming in based on how you all have been performing, and now we've seen two very different looks for Cloud9 Challenger this weekend. Um, I think our our preparation going into the week for Markov was not good enough, and Moose Haters just go to Yarn of all time, I guess. And the way they play is really, really unique. So mm -hmm. props to them for being really good and 2 0 us on the day. But I think our preparation was really, really lackluster going into that match. So we uh, mm. definitely got our, you know, took our slack down and took it way more seriously today. So, All right. Uh, may maybe a little bit of a refocusing, uh, being a little less loose here. Uh, we talk about MNS a lot on the broadcast because he is, you know, the king of solo kills right now. But we do have to acknowledge you and Zazel 
have semi silently been hard stopping these bot lanes <laughs> in the league. <laughs> yeah. So I want I want to start with that. Uh, the matchup against Unforgiven and Destiny, somebody that we thought might be some of your stiffest competition. How do you feel the matchup went? Um, I think it went really, really well. I have a lot of respect for Unforgiven. I think Unforgiven's really, really good. He played at Worlds really recently, so mm -hmm. you know, no joke there at all. Um. I'm surprised they didn't uh, pick Lucian on 1P on blue side both times. I think that could have given him a lot more agency. But uh, I think uh, so far for the most part, he's a really good player and they put up a good fight just ball in wise. They were going for a lot of scaling overall. It felt like they wanted to uh, kind of hit the two, three item late game team fight by, but y'all just weren't giving them that opportunity. Is Was that part of your prep? Is that something that you expected going in? Like, hey, let's, let's draft for early. Let's try and stop them quick. <laughs> Not really, man. We just <laughs> we just sent it and we did our style and turned out well. <laughs> yeah. Hey, clearly gave you the 2-0. Uh, I want to get more into yourself as a player and your development because this is the first time that we're seeing you uh, in the Challengers League. Now we we bid farewell as you moved on to LCS. Now we got your back here. I want to give you the opportunity to kind of reflect on your time in the LCS, maybe some lessons learned and how that's helped shape you as a player now. Um, I think. I've been a part of the LCS and the Academy Leagues for a while now. So it's I kind of called it home for my career. And I haven't regretted a single decision yet. And I've had a really good time playing both LCS and even now. I think I really love playing with my teammates here in Challengers League, especially with C9. They've been a really, really amazing org to me. And so far, it's just been only fun since the start of this year. So, you know, a good time in both leagues, no matter what. Do you see either league having like a difference in your development as a player? Because my assumption would be at the Academy Challenger level, it's more about kind of learning different play styles, learning different matchups, whereas at the LCS style, it's trying to catch up to kind of a certain level of competition. Am I am I off the mark there? Is, is there a big difference in your eyes of kind of what you learn in each league? Uh, for sure. I think in LCS, you get punished a lot more for doing um, specific things or just playing a matchup that's really greedy. But I think in Academy slash Challengers League, I think uh, you have a lot more leeway to learn more about the fundamentals of League and team play. So I think it is a very different league, but both have their own respective rights for teaching a player certain things. All right. Well, that leads into then the future. What what are your goals for your, your time here now? Obviously, there's been a whole overhaul. It's no longer Academy. It's now Challengers League. We have more teams in the system. What are you working on this year? Uh, we want to win the split and we all want to make it to LCS, and we all want to have a good time. So, that's us. And having a good time. Yes, sir. Okay. <laughs> well, is, is that an important part of the process for the whole team, or just you individually? Uh, I think the whole team. I think the more fun you have, the better you play. Okay. And, you know, who doesn't want a good time? True, true. Does that translate off the Rift, too? Do, do y'all, like, hang out outside of the games or do anything fun as a team? Uh, yeah, for sure. Most of us live in uh, C9 HQ, so we joke around all the time. We spend like day in day out with each other, so it's a great time. Yeah. Who's all staying there? You said almost all of you. So who's in the crew? Uh, me, Tomio, and Eminem stay in the main house, and then Zazel and um, Fake God stay in a different house. But I think one more might be moving in. What's the uh, the craziest stories that you got so far? I know we're only like three weeks in, but do you have anything like that stands out? Is like this this was wacky oh uh, yeah for sure if you go into twitch.tv slash lol you'll see a bunch of amazing clips so you should definitely <laughs> tune in and check that out it's a gold mine there i don't know how it hasn't been discovered but you know i'm advertising it now you know we'll, we'll take a look we'll do so, some homework uh <laughs> to see what we're missing you also did give some shout outs to tomio before we went live saying that you wanted to give an opportunity to to chat about him because th is this your first time playing with tomio on a team uh, it is my first time playing with Tomio, but I've been playing with him in solo queue for like two to three years, and all we do is joke when we play solo queue, win or lose. So <laughs> it's just been a really good time being able to play with him. That's good. He, he elevates the vibes then? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's the, he's the vibe guy, whether he wants to be or not. <laughs> whether he wants to be or not. That almost sounds like a threat. Damn, Tomio. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, final shout-outs lost. Anything uh, you want to mention to anybody at home watching or anybody in the crowd? Um... Shout out to C9 for being an amazing org. I think they've just been really, really great up on like all areas. And shout out to my team as well as our sponsors. And yeah, that's it. Cool. And uh, happy year of the rabbit. I, I hear that y you are a, a rabbit. Yeah, hopefully, uh, hopefully this is the year. Hopefully this is a good year.
All right, it's a lucky year for you. That's good. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you, Lost. <laughs> Congratulations on the win, and uh, best of luck going into prep for your next matches. Thank you. Thank you. I will bring back out the casters <laughs> to close out the day. I hear you I are think a I rabbit. <laughs> hey, that what was his that? words, not <laughs> mine. I, I, I saw know. what you <laughs> were going for. <laughs> He said, that I asked, is there anything wacky I can say about your broadcast? And he was like, yeah, yeah, say that. So I don't know. Maybe I just got trolled. Oh, no, fair enough. No, no, it was good. I, I saw what you were doing. Maybe it is a good year for him. I mean, it's been a good three weeks. That's for sure. Yeah, I mean, hey, it's been a good start for Cloud9 Challengers uh, early on in the season. We only have seven weeks of competition. This is week three. So we're getting to that halfway point and Cloud9 are up there towards the top of the standing. Speaking Ooh. of, let's take a look at them right now because they are updated for the day. And I believe that uh, Challengers League Twitch stream has already ended because I saw we got raided by them earlier. They were way ahead of us. So this should be the end of day two, week three standings. Dignitas Challengers in first place, 10 and two. But we still got a clump for second place, Desterix. It is tight at nine and three between three teams. I know, I know. And worry not, Fear is the best team in this clump right here. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I just got to mess with all the people who have been doubting our provisional squads. They do put up, and I'm excited to see Fear there. But tough competition all around mm -hmm. them. You know, props to uh, Dig or taking that first place spot, uh, spot. They did fight against uh, FlyFam a little bit earlier, but uh, lots of fun, lots of fun in the standings. And I will say, beat down, we had uh, been kind of building up this narrative of the top two provisional teams will not face relegations. Right now, those are Fear and Wildcard. It is looking unlikely that another provisional team will catch up to either of them right now. Not impossible, but unlikely given the power level of the teams we've been seeing so far. But Team Liquid first, they're kind of catching up to AoE right now. They're only one game behind them in the standings, and that can affect seeding going into relegations. So it still feels better to have that top spot as opposed to, you know, the second to top spot. You'll probably have an easier chance to defend your, uh, your position here in the Challengers League. Absolutely. And I think overall, I agree. The chances are slim, but I won't say none. Not just because of the level, but just because of how many games have been played so far and mm -hmm. kind of struggles we've been seeing from some of our provisional teams. But again, we've highlighted this time and time again, of course, placing well, doing well, uh, obviously not getting relegated, all wonderful things, but it's all about player development. And by yes. the end of the split, if CLGF and Fly F, TLF, all, all those provisional teams, if they all look good, they all look coordinated, if they look better than they did at the start, that's a win in my books. Mm -hmm. A lot of them have the right mindset, too. Uh, you were talking about fear. I had a talk with Fear's coach before, and he was saying that, like, yeah, I don't care if we go 6-0 or 0-6. What I care about is the improvement of my players upon mm. the season. Right Aspect mindset good, to good, good. That's a mindset that a lot of the provisional teams have had. I know CLG Faith has echoed a similar sentiment. Uh, and I think that's the correct one to have because, of course, that's what this entire league is about. Yes, winning feels great because you're going to have more eyes on you for longer the season. And chances are you're performing better uh, individually, but it is about your individual performance and development and getting to that position where you feel like you can make that jump to the LCS. That's why it's called at the LCS after all. But that will do it for day two, week three of the broadcast. Everybody, it's in the books. Thank you, Desirex and Beatdown for being my amazing casters and keeping up the energy on the day. Thank you to everybody in production behind the scenes for keeping the gears rolling. You in Twitch chat, because if you weren't watching, we wouldn't have this show. And also, speaking of, the players who compete week in and week out on their way to the LCS. We'll be back tomorrow with more Path to LCS games on the NACL. Don't miss it.